Kitty Kitty. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. So um, today's video is going to be a makes video and it's slightly different to the things I had planned. There are a couple of things here that I featured in my plans video but as with everything uh, inspiration struck in different ways and I'm not very good at sticking to plans sometimes so a couple of the things are slightly different to what I said I would make. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about today is a dress. Um, actually, before we start, let's just talk about this t-shirt, which is the Frankie Baseball t-shirt from Tilly and the Buttons book Stretch, which everybody's heard of by now, surely. Um, this is one of my favourite t-shirt patterns, and this was made using the fabric that I bought on my birthday weekend uh, from Winchester. I think it was C&H, C&H Fabrics, <clears throat> uh, there's a shop there. And this is just a lovely grey jersey and this time I put the baseball TV on the front which I'm loving and used white plain jersey for the sleeves. And um, I've made this pattern actually fit my, my body perfectly now so I graded between two sizes to make it absolutely fit the way I want it to. It's lovely and long, I love the fact that it's long and shaped so yeah that's what I'm wearing today can highly recommend this pattern. So the dress I made um, sort of came out of the blue really. I was um, sent some beautiful jersey fabric uh, which I talked about in my last video um, from Luby Doo Fabrics and I'll put a link down below for you. Um, and uh, it's the most fabulous grey floral spot jersey and um, I was just, I couldn't wait to make that into something. So it sort of leapfrogged the queue of things to do. I looked through my stash, I didn't really want to spend any more money on patterns that I've got tons of patterns. So um, I'm utilising my Ikea bags, which are super useful for keeping. I don't know about you guys, but it is a nigh on impossibility to try and get all of these big four pattern pieces back inside the envelope once you're done cutting out and tracing. So those plastic bags come in really, really handy. So this is the pattern I used. It's a McCall's pattern M6884 and I think I must have got this free with either Sew Magazine or Love Sewing Magazine quite a little while ago I think. And I've always liked wrap dresses, the shape of wrap dresses. They're really comfortable to wear. And this is actually a mock wrap dress. So um, I made view B here. I wasn't as keen on the, uh, the other one here has got sort of like a diagonal panel on the front. And I wasn't really up for the long one. I did think briefly about making this one. It's got gathers on the waist with the tie. Um, that's quite a nice shape, so maybe I will make that again in the future. But um, yeah, so I shall go and get changed and show you what I made. So here it is. Uh, it, like I said, is a mock wrap, so there's no chance of a flash of the knickers. I am going to insert um, a twirl uh, somewhere so that you can see it properly. But as you can see, I just move my hair out the way. Um, it's got nice little cap sleeves, and I had to gather them to ease them in. And there's a couple of tiny puckers, which I'm not too pleased with. But yeah, I don't think anyone else had noticed that. Um, it's quite boobalicious, so I have put a stay stitch here on the neckline because I'm not much of a one for flashing the decolletage or whatever you call it so um, yeah that is not going anywhere that is fixed and so it's a mock wrap so you have two layers of fabric at the front which is sewn into the side seam here and just one layer of fabric at the back and the ties are integral to the seams so they're not going anywhere um, so that makes it really nice and comfortable and easy to wear actually um, you just pop it on over your head and then tie the tie up and you're good to go. So um, I had a couple of issues making it 
mainly because my machinery was playing about, my overlocker was being a bit stupid. Um, but actually, once I got down to the nitty gritty of actually sewing it, it was quite a quick make. The only complicated thing about it is when you turn the whole thing inside out to sew the side seams down. I had to really think about that because um, it's a bit like a Chinese puzzle. You're sort of trying to figure out which bit goes where. Uh, but once you've got that bit done, actually, the fit's really lovely. I will say, with McCaws and any of the big four patterns, quite often they include a huge amount of ease. I don't know why. But if you go by your body measurements um, on the garment packet, so up here, I, uh, I should have made a size 14. But actually, when I looked at the finished garment measurements, which are here, uh, I didn't need inches and inches of extra fabric. It's a jersey dress, so really slightly smaller is better because you, you're going to get a better fit if the jersey is slightly stretched. So I went for a size 12 in the end, and I'd say that's probably uh, the right size. Although I did have to take, I shaved a little bit off here um, on the sides because it had quite an exaggerated um, hip shape. Uh, so I just took maybe a centimetre off from about the waist downwards just to get the fit absolutely perfect. But yeah, I couldn't be more pleased with this dress. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to wear it lots over the summer. And I put it on Sewing UK. And if you joined my vlog on the back of what seeing this photograph of my dress, thanks so much for subscribing to me. Um, I got probably, I think, 1.1 thousand likes and hundreds of comments. So I'm so grateful to all those Sewing UK people out there for um, coming along and checking out my vlog. So um, lots of people actually asked whether I'd do a tutorial on this dress and I think that could be in the pipeline, uh, never say never. I definitely need to sort out how I would do that in terms of equipment and making sure that the camera is looking in you know, the right place but um, I will put my thinking cap on because I know that this dress is very popular and lots of people had bought the pattern on the back of seeing this one. So. Um, stay tuned and there may well be a tutorial in the pipeline. So yeah, what more can I say? Love it. Thanks so much to um, Luby Doo Fabrics for sponsoring this make. Uh, it's such a lovely fabric and uh, I don't endorse things unless I love them and I've looked on her website and the jersey fabric on there is amazing. They've got whales, they've got um, dodos just come in. Who doesn't want a sweatshirt with dodos on? Uh, police cars and yeah, fabulous. And at the moment, if you spend over £20, you get free delivery with the code MAY in the checkout. So check her out. Anyway, so next makes. Let's go back to my original plans video. I wanted to make three Oliver and S bucket hats. And I Oliver and S have this pattern on their website, free to download, I think now, um, although I got the pattern out of the book, um, Little Things to Sew, I think it's called. I have featured it in previous videos, and I've made this bucket hat pattern over and over again over the years. So I can't show you my son's one because it's on his head today, but my daughter's one I finished last night. So if you'll remember from the previous video, I talked about this lovely cherry, she'd chosen cherries for her hat and because the bucket hat is reversible you can wear it either way out which is a really nice, oh, there's a lime scale from my iron that's sprayed out there. Um, and what I've done, I don't know if you can see, probably easier on the cherry side, I have put lines of stitching at probably about quarter inch intervals on the brim just to give it a really nice shape. It doesn't quite fit my head unfortunately but you get the idea and my daughter's really pleased with it. My son's is made from a skull and crossbones, oh, sort my hair out, skull and crossbones on one side and camo fabric on the other which I talked about before and I will try and insert a picture of it somewhere.
My middle child is still deciding. I think she's going to go with the chickens that I showed you in the last video, my make, uh, my plans video. So yeah, there's another hat to go, but two down, one to go is not bad. So the next thing that I've sewn is from this pattern that I spoke about previously. It's Simplicity 1605. And I thought this was a really good value pattern because it's it's got men and boys and shorts and pyjama bottoms and also there's a little wash bag there if you wanted to make a wash bag. But I predominantly bought this pattern because I wanted a really decent raglan t-shirt pattern for my husband and the fact that it came with a little boys one was, you know, a bonus really. Um, but actually I've ended up making my son's t-shirt first and um, I have got plans to make my husband one. Uh, he'll keep saying, oh, when are you going to make that t-shirt? I just never get around to it. But it's so much more fun sewing for kids because you can choose wacky fabric and really get away with being creative. So I've made uh, this t-shirt. I showed you this fabric. It's from myfabrics.co.uk. It's got monsters all over it. And I just think it's the cutest thing ever. And I've just used a bit of black Ponted Aroma for the sleeves and the neckband. And, uh, you know, really quick to make up. I think probably I made that in about an hour and a half, including tracing times. I always like to trace the patterns, especially on children's clothes, because you then are able to use the next size and the next size, because normally they are overlaid over one over the other. And um, yeah, he's really pleased. It fits nicely. He's quite a small chap. He um, isn't sort of your average four-year-old. He's quite slight, so it's got lots of room for growing. But I did like the fact that the net band is really quite thick on this t-shirt. I did the twin needling as I usually do. Um, I always find if you overlock the edge first, it gives it a really lovely professional finish on your t-shirts and this jersey is super quality it's really quite sturdy I think it's gonna last the you know run the test of time with lots of washing and wearing so um, I can see I'm gonna make loads of those t-shirts and I really must get on and trace the men's one uh, what else have I got to show you today I have finished all my pattern weights so um, I'd only made one the last time I spoke to you guys and there are now eight of these lovely vintage Liberty pattern weights and I've been using them um, every time I use my rotary cutter. So they are fab and I saved myself a bit of money because I was trying to talk myself out of buying some of the lovely pattern weights that there are out there and these actually are nice because they've got a little story behind them. They were... Um, one of uh, our granny's skirts, which I've cut up. So there's those. Um, if you want to know how to make one of those, I briefly describe it in my um, one of my videos, which I will again try to link to. So uh, the Stitch Sisters, whom I absolutely love watching their vlogs, they did one on knicker making, and I've never been interested in making knickers. And now I am just wanting to make all the knickers. I don't know why. It looks so easy and straightforward and I thought, mm, the pattern's free. So let's give it a go. So this is a Megan Nielsen pattern that they talked about on their vlog. Uh, the Acacia knickers, uh, which you get as a free download if you sign up to the newsletter. And as soon as I watched their video, it was like, I've got to make knickers. So I, that's the one time actually that I really appreciate a PDF pattern is when you've got this sudden like need to make something and you can download it, print it out, stick it together and literally have it in your hand, uh, you know, 20 minutes later. So what I've done with these, this is the back piece. I made a prototype or a toile using an old piece of jersey that I had left over from my Janie dress and just to see whether or not the fit would be any good. Um, I found it quite low rise uh, so what I've done is I have added an inch to the top of the pattern. So this is a size small and 
Having tried them on, obviously there's no elastic in them yet. They seem to be quite, I'm just showing you my knickers, it's weird. Um, yeah, they seem to be quite a nice fit, except they are quite low rise and I like a bit more of a belly hugger. So yeah, one inch added. I have tons of jersey scraps. I mean, how pretty is a pair of knickers in this gonna be? Loads of jersey scraps. And it's actually a really good scrap busting um, activity because you need the tiniest amount so I can see I'm going to be like knicker making for ages. I just popped into Franklin's today um, and bought myself some Pico elastic. So this is the elastic that has the really pretty lacy effect on the edge. This is like 50p a meter I think in there so only cost me a couple of quid. It's a nice blue one and I also went for a black lace effect. So the next plan is to cut out a small but with the extra inch and then actually put the elastic on and have a finished pair of knickers and then I will show you my knickers in the nicest way possible. I'm not modelling them. I will hold them up for you. So that I think is all I've got to say today. Thanks very much for watching. If you like my video, please subscribe. I'm so excited. I think I'm nearly up to 400 subscribers now, so that is awesome. And click the like button and always make comments because I love reading people's comments. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.